Good evening and welcome to Biswell. I'm Adrian Seat. The proposed Johor Singapore Special Economic Zone, JSSEZ, is starting to take shape with the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding MOU between Malaysia and Singapore. The MOU is expected to further boost trade between Johor and Singapore. Earlier, Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim and his Singaporean counterpart Lee Sien Lung witnessed the signing of the Special Economic Zone MOU. The zone is expected to foster stronger business connections and improve connectivity between the two countries. Amongst the sectors that the zone is targeting are electronics, financial services and healthcare. Last year, Johor secured more than 70 billion ringgit worth of foreign investments in various sectors. Anwar and Lee also witnessed the historic moment of the RTS Link project being symbolically connected between both nations. The construction of the project, which had reached of 65% as of end of last year, has a capacity of 10,000 passengers per hour and is scheduled for completion in December of 2026. Than the woodlands, not Singapore. Bursa Malaysia closed lower today. At 5 p.m., the FBM KLCI was down 3.86 points to close at 1,483. Total gainers and losers were 406 and 568 counters respectively, with 447 counters unchanged. According to Bank Mualat, profit-taking activities may have been the main reasons given that the benchmark index was higher on both Monday and Tuesday. Meanwhile, Japan's Nikkei share average on Thursday reached its highest since February of 1990. This as a weaker yen buoyed exporters and caution over an impending hike by the Bank of Japan continued to fade on the back of weak wage data. The Nikkei was up 1.77% to close at 35,049.86. Citing from Reuters, the index is on track for a third straight day of gains closing on its largest weekly rise since late March of 2020. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York President John Williams said it is still too soon to call for rate cuts, as the central bank still has some distance to go on getting inflation back to its target. Citing Reuters, the policymaker said the banking sector liquidity levels do not signal any near-term need for the Fed to stop the contraction of its balance sheet, a process which has complemented rate hikes aimed at bringing inflation back to 2%. William expects that a restrictive policy stance would need to be maintained for some time to fully achieve its goals. He added that it will only be appropriate to dial back the degree of policy restraint when the Fed is confident that inflation is moving towards the target on a sustained basis. The price outlook for palm oil remains optimistic this year, with an average expected trading price of 4,000 ringgit per tonne. Now, according to Malaysian Palm Oil Council, MPOC, positive projection is rooted in the shifting of supply and demand dynamics in Indonesia, which is moving towards a negative growth pattern following the implementation of B35 in August of 2023. MPOC is also forecasting a deficit of 0.24 million tonnes in Indonesia's palm oil supply as domestic consumption for biodiesel and food is expected to increase by 0.64 million tonnes. The deficit could further expand if exports exceed the forecasted levels. Meanwhile, the Plantation and Commodities Ministry will look into more details before reviewing the rate of the windfall profit levy imposed on the palm oil industry. Its minister, Dato Sri Johari Abdul Ghani, said he will meet the stakeholders to hear their concerns. They say windfall tax is 3,000. If a CPO 3,000 and above, there will be a windfall tax. But they told us that uh, now cost has gone up. You know, dulu kita buat tanam kelapa sawit ni 1,800, 1,500 demi kos. Kan kos ni almost mencecah 3,000. Uh, 2,800, 3,000. You know, in certain area, even more than 3,000. 
He said this to the media after delivering his keynote address at the Palm Oil Economic Review and Outlook Seminar 2024 earlier today. He added, in light of the current heightened costs, adjustments are deemed necessary, adding that the ministry will conduct a more thorough examination. The minister also proposed the introduction of a technical vocational and education training, TVAT program, for oil palm harvesters. That's all the time we have for Biswell. I'm Adrian Seat. Keep tuning in to TV Tiga.